Hey, Chef Perry here again from ChefPerryPerkins.com and the My Kitchen Outreach Program. I'm a third generation chef, culinary instructor, and author of the Home Chef Series, and I'm here to help you create amazing, simple, and affordable dishes for your family. And it is colder than a Norwegian coal digger's, well, it's cold outside. And when it's cold, I like foods that end with chowder. This one's an old favorite. It's my own riff on my dad's signature clam chowder using some of our fresh Pacific Northwest salmon. This beauty was a gift from my friend Rudy, a native Yakima Nation fisherman. Chef Chris was kind enough to break this one down for us. If you get your salmon from the meat counter, have them cut it into four inch thick steaks for this recipe. Our first step is gonna to be to make some salmon stock. For this, we're gonna use the head, spine, and tail of the salmon. If you didn't fillet your own, ask the butcher at your local meat counter for some. You might have to come back and pick it up the next day. For two pounds of scraps, we're gonna bring a gallon of water to a slow simmer, add about a tablespoon of sea salt, some pepper, and a couple of bay leaves then the bones and simmer it uncovered for four to six hours. You can do this in the morning or even the day before. I like to toss in some carrots, celery, and shallots if I'm making more stock than I need for just this recipe. Otherwise, don't bother. We'll be adding plenty of flavor later. Next, we're gonna scoop out the big pieces with a slotted spoon and then strain out the solid. I like to do a second straining through cheesecloth to get a cleaner stock, but again, that's up to you. Oh, and you can toss those solids. There's not gonna be much flavor left in them anyway. Once your stock is strained, set it on a back burner over low heat to keep warm until we need it later. Next, we're gonna peel two extra large russet potatoes and slice them into large cubes. I've always wanted to do that. When making stews, soups, or chowders, especially when they need to simmer a while, always cut your veggies in large pieces. Not only do they shrink some while simmering, but they tend to hold their consistency better and not get so mushy. We cover a lot of tips and tricks like this in The Home Chef Transforming the American Kitchen. How's that for some shameless self-promotion? Okay, back to the recipe. Melt half a stick of butter in a large pan and saute your chopped celery and onions over medium-high heat for about five minutes. You just want them to get a little caramelization on the outside but still be crunchy. Then add a pound of bacon, pre-cooked and chopped, and stir it in with the veggies. Let this cook for a few more minutes until the bacon has rendered and is heated through. Go ahead and remove the bacon and veggies from the pan with a slotted spoon, reserving as much of the butter and bacon drippings as possible. Once the solids are moved out of the pan, raise the heat to medium high. You can add a little more oil here too if needed. Over medium high heat, we're going to fry the salmon until it's nicely brown. Then flip it over and do the same to the other side. The salmon's still basically raw at this point, but it'll finish cooking in the stock. This browning is what really adds the flavor to your chowder. When the salmon has browned on both sides, move it to the stock pot on top of the potatoes and reduce the heat to a low simmer. Add some butter if needed to reach about a quarter cup of fat in the frying pan. Now we're going to make a roux, which is the base of all great stews, by adding an equal amount of flour, in this case a quarter cup, to the fat that's in the frying pan. Mix and keep it moving until your roux becomes golden brown and starts to smell slightly nutty. The roux is what's going to give your chowder its thick, creamy consistency. Sorry, Grandma, no cornstarch in the chowder. Once your roux has darkened, which means the flour has been cooked, it's time to start adding your salmon stock, about a half a cup at a time. At first, your roux is going to sizzle and seize up into a paste. Don't panic. This is what it's supposed to do. Just keep adding hot stock, stirring until smooth, then adding more stock, etc., etc., until you reach the consistency of a thin gravy. Somewhere along here, you'll want to trade in your spoon for a whisk and just keep whisking until it's smooth with a silky looking finish. Remove your potatoes and salmon from the stock and add in your gravy whisking until smooth. Then set the stock aside on low heat, uncovered. Never cover a thickened stock or gravy or a nasty skin will form on top. Next, we're gonna break our salmon into big chunks. You can go smaller or even shred it if you prefer, but I like it like this. Now we're gonna add two cups of warmed whole milk to our broth and mix it in. You don't want to use cold milk here as it would drop the temperature of all of the liquid and we want to keep it hot. Next, we're going to add in our salmon chunks. I like to do this by hand so they don't get broken up, but if you're using smaller chunks or shredding, you can go ahead and use tongs or even a mixing spoon. Now it's time to bring everyone out on stage. Carefully add your cooked potatoes, celery, onions, and bacon back into the pot and stir gently just enough to combine everything. An important key to great cooking is that you can taste the individual ingredients in a dish. 
This process is known as layering flavors, as we've done in this recipe by basically cooking each ingredient separately and then combining them into the finished dish. After tasting your chowder, and we always taste the dish before adding any seasonings, right? Go ahead and add a little bit more sea salt if needed. Add black pepper to taste, I like a lot of pepper, and then a tablespoon or so of Mexican chili powder. If you can't find the Mexican kind, regular chili powder works just fine. And stir those lovely seasonings into your chowder. Now go ahead and let it rest for about a half an hour to let the flavors marry a little, and then portion it into bowls for serving. I like to add some big garlic butter croutons on top. They add a little more oomph than plain old oyster crackers. Another little hit of coarse black pepper. I told you I like pepper. And finally, a sprinkle of fresh chopped Italian parsley just to give a little color to the dish. And there you have it. Chef Perry's soon to be famous, hopefully, bacon salmon chowder. Guaranteed to warm all the way down to those frozen toasts. Now, if you're ready to take your cooking to the next level using professional chef techniques and tips at home, pick up a copy of my book, The Home Chef, on Amazon.com. And be sure to check out my other videos. And heck, while you're at it, you might as well subscribe to my channel. Lastly, I promise, for 52 weeks of free dinner plans and weekly shopping lists, visit my nonprofit outreach page at www.simplysmartdinnerplans.com. Now go cook real food.